Good morning, children. It's time for another math lesson. So um, this week we are going to be working on coordinate planes. And our objective today is to graph points on a coordinate plane to solve real world and mathematical problems. Okay. All right. So let's do a little bit of vocabulary. So first, a coordinate plane is a graph mark with two number lines that are used to graph ordered pairs. And we have our x-axis and our y-axis. So the x is the horizontal line and the y is the vertical line. And then this spot right here that is 0, 0 is our point of origin where the x and the y-axis intersect. So I'm going to go back because I forgot I want you guys to watch Dream Pop video. <clears throat> so we're going to play. Ah, how does a robot keep beating me? Dear Tim and Moby, how do you convert data from a table to a graph? Thanks, Taylor. Well, to convert data to a graph from a table of values like this one, you need to know about coordinate planes. A plane is a flat surface with length and width, but no depth. In other words, it has two dimensions instead of three. And it has no edges, sort of like a piece of paper that goes on forever. Oh, well, planes aren't real. They're imaginary models of space. A coordinate plane is a plane overlaid with two perpendicular number lines. Those lines help you find any point on the plane. It's also known as a Cartesian plane, after René Descartes, the guy who developed the idea way back in 1637. Basically, he drew two perpendicular lines in the middle of a plane and called the place where the lines intersect the origin. One line represents the horizontal distance from the origin. We call that the x-axis. The other line represents vertical distance from the origin. That's called the y-axis. These lines help us find our way around the plane. Well, everything starts from the origin. The coordinates, or the address, of the origin are 0, 0. That means to find the origin, you have to move 0 units horizontally and 0 units vertically. The set of numbers that describes a point is called an ordered pair because the order of the numbers matters. For instance, 2, 3 is different from 3, 2. The first number tells you the address of a point on the x-axis, while the second number tells you the address of a point on the y-axis. So, to find the point described by the ordered pair 2, 3, you'd start by looking at the first number, the x-coordinate. It tells you to go two units to the right. Next, you look at the second number, the y-coordinate, which tells you to go three units up. Now I'm at the point 2, 3. But if you were finding the point described by the ordered pair 3, 2, you start out by going 3 units to the right, and then 2 units up. We're in totally different places. Each section of the coordinate plane is called a quadrant, because there are four of them. You can always predict what quadrant a point will fall in by looking at the positive and negative numbers. Quadrant 1 has all the points with a positive x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate, like 2, 3. Quadrant 2 has all the points with a negative x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate, like negative 2, 3. Quadrant 3 has all the points with a negative x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate, like negative 2, negative 3. And quadrant 4... Yep, quadrant 4 has all the points with a positive x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate, like 2, negative 3. You can remember that X comes first because, well, X comes before Y in the alphabet. Nope, this doesn't help me win chess at all. <sighs> Play again? All right. So, back to this. Here we go. So, if you'll notice, in the Brain Pop video, they had four different quadrants. Um, we are only going to be working with one, um, but the video was a good introduction for you to get um, what you needed. So again, this 
area is just quadrant run, uh, sorry, one, and that's all we're going to be using. All right, so x-axis and y-axis. So when you're looking to find the x-coordinate, you need to choose an elevator. So I need to walk over to the elevator I'm going to do. And then for the y-coordinate, then I go up to the floor that I want to go to. Okay, so we kind of talked about these before. We've been doing them on and off. They've been on some of our, um, uh, those time test things that we take. Um, but just remember you go over and then up, okay? Or, you know, later on in life, you'll be going down. But anyway, for what we're doing, it is elevator, choose your elevator on the horizontal line and then go up to the floor Y, okay? All right, so we're going to practice some coordinates here. So I want you to, um, as I as I show you the boat, because it's kind of be kind of like Battleship. As I show you the boat, I want you in your head to think about what that coordinate would be. Remember, you go over and then up. So what would that ordered pair be? So first, our first boat flies in. Think about it. And you should have said zero, six, because we went to, our elevator is zero and we went up to floor six. Okay, next boat. Think about it, look at it. Should be two, two. Next boat. Should get faster as we go. Over and up. So three, five. Next one. Over and up, five, one. And last boat on this one, over and up should be seven, five. Okay, hey, let's do some more boats. Here we go. It is zero, zero, which is also called our origin or a point of origin, something for you to remember. Hey, next boat. Over and up. One, four. Next boat. Over and up. Three, eight. Next one. Six, five. Hey, this one, look at it closely. So we're going to go to elevator number seven, and we're not going up anywhere. We're on zero. All right, so I want you to take out a piece of paper and number your paper 1 through 11 or A through K, and I want you to pause the video, and I want you to write down the coordinate pair or the ordered pair for each letter, and then come back, and you can see... The answer so make sure you pause the video here so you have time to write down all the ordered pairs that you need okay welcome back you should have written down all the ordered pairs let's see how you did you can pause the video here too so that you can check all your answers and see how you did if you missed any what'd you do wrong did you go the wrong direction first did you look at the wrong line look about how you did this one Okay. All right. Now you get to practice. So on a piece of paper, I want you to draw a grid. Um, if you use a piece of notebook paper, you can just draw the vertical line. So your Y axis, which will help you. Um, and then I want you to pause the video here and you're going to plot the ordered pairs on your paper that you have uh, next to you. Okay. So pause the video, plot your ordered pairs. Make sure you label them. If you do L and you plot the point, make sure you write L next to it, okay? So pause the video. All right, let's look and see how you did. This is where all of your points should be plotted and labeled. So pause the video so you can double check and see how you did.
All right, now let's do some real world questions here. Using a coordinate plane that we have, it has some ordered pair, it has some, it's kind of like a map. Um, it even has a compass rose for us, okay? So let's look and see if we can answer these questions. So it says, what ordered pair gives the location of Kobe Bryant's house? Well, I find Kobe Bryant's house and I find the ordered pair by choosing my elevator and going up. So this would be two, four is the answer to number one. Okay, number two. Now this one's a little trickier, so you have to look at it closely. LeBron lives two miles east and five miles north from where his coach lives. What is the ordered pair for his coach's house? Not LeBron's house, the coach's house. So I want you to think about, so this is LeBron's house, and this is two miles east and five miles north from where the coach lives. That means I have to go in the opposite direction. So it says two miles east. So that means I have to go two miles west, which takes me here. And then I have to go five, that I am five miles north of where I need to go. So I have to go five miles south. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is where his coach lives. And that is five, one. Okay. A little trickier, you have to kind of think about it. All right, number three, write directions on how to get from the Staples Center to Shaq's house. Well, I'm at the Staples Center, and this is a map. So you're telling a friend what direction and how far to get there. So pause the video and think about it for a second. Okay, you should have written down something. Let's see if you did this right. So Staples Center to Shaq's house. Well, let's see. I need to go south. So one, two, three, four, five, six miles south. And one, two, three, four miles uh, east. Okay. So you should have written six miles south, then east four miles. Okay. All right. Mr. Martin walked six miles east and seven miles north from the point of origin to get to LeBron's house. What did he do wrong? Well, the point of origin is zero, zero, we know that. So Mr. Martin started down here at zero, zero, and he walked six miles east, which is this way, and seven miles north. Oh, he's not at LeBron's house. Hmm, what did he do wrong? LeBron's house is at seven, Six. Oh, so he should have went seven miles east and six miles north. He went the opposite direction, or the he flipped his ordered pair, and he went the wrong way first. Okay. All right. So what ordered the last question? Sorry about that thing keeps popping up there. What ordered pair gives the location of the Staples Center? So again, Staples Center's here on our map. This is five, eight. Okay, all right. So um, that is our math lesson for today. Tomorrow you will be doing um, some coordinate plane uh, practice um, using a new website that we're gonna be using called GoFormative. It's so cool. You literally click the link, sign in with Google, and then you can actually um, like draw on the computer and stuff. It's so it's so good. I love it. Um, and I'm so glad we get to use these next new technologies. So um, let me know if you saw any errors on the um, thing. I think I did okay this time, um, but I will see you later.